God whose nature is always to forgive and to show mercy. We humbly implore you for your servant, Jim, whom you have called to journey to you. And since he hoped and believed in you, grant that he may be led to our true homeland, to the delight in its everlasting joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Will you please be seated. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The just man, though he die early, shall be rest. For the age that is honorable comes not with the passing of time, nor can he be measured in terms of years. Rather, understanding is the hoary crown for men, and the unsullied life, the attainment of old age. He who pleased God was loved. He who lived among sinners was transported, snatched away, lest wickedness pervert his mind or deceit beguile his soul. For the witchery of paltry things obscures what is right, and the world of desire transforms the innocent mind. Having become perfect in a short while, he reached the fullness of a long career. For his soul was pleasing to the Lord. Therefore he, spent, therefore he sped him out of the midst of wickedness. But the people saw and did not understand, nor did they take this into account. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, no one lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why then do you judge your brothers? Or you, who, why do you look down on your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of God, for it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bend before me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us shall give an accounting of himself to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. As we gather for Jim's funeral mass, I'd like to introduce that I'm Father Dan Blount, the pastor of Our Lady of Grace, and uh, our whole parish family is truly uh, uh, moved uh, and have opened our hearts and our souls to receive Jim for this funeral mass as well as the waking yesterday. 
Joining me in the sanctuary is Father Rick Casisco. He's a pastor in Mount Pleasant, uh, and Father Rick is here because he is one of those persons among many in the United States who succumbed to a middle age crisis and purchased a Harley Davidson uh, from Jim's thing. So, uh, uh, so uh, I really appreciate his presence and uh, fraternal support for you. But before we, before I go on and reflect upon God's word in light of Jim's funeral, I think first and foremost, we should pause and look into the depths of our hearts and extend our prayerful support for his wife, Linda, as she recuperates in Florida. For although she physically cannot be here, I'm sure that all of us know in a place that she is here spiritually, and we extend to you, Linda, I'm sure one day you will hear uh, these words or watch them, uh, that our hearts and prayers are with you for a recovery. Amen. And to Jim and Linda's children, uh, Kim and Christy and Jim, and as well as uh, uh, son-in-law Bruce and uh, daughter-in-law Lisa, uh, to your children, uh, the grandchildren of the deceased, Ryan, Corey, Cameron, Dax, Dea, and Gigi, and their children, the great-grandchildren of the deceased, Kaylin, Garen, Caden, Iva, Owen, Braylon, Ashley, Luke, Lexi, Alexis, Ashton, Aaron, and Avery, as well as uh, step-granddaughters Carly and Jessica and husband Matt, along with your child, uh, a great-great-granddaughter, uh, our father, uh, son, uh, Miles, that all of that extended family uh, that is here today, our heartfelt sympathy to you in prayers, as well as to Jim's uh, siblings, uh, brothers Dave, Merrill, Roy, R.J. Russell, and Sister Rhoda. What an immense family tree is gathered here on the day of uh, celebrating Jim's funeral mass. That there really is one aspect of prayer today, and that is individually and collectively, we are all focused on the mercy of God that comes to us in the person of Jesus Christ who as Christians we believe is our Lord and Savior. An eternal mercy, eternal forgiveness that comes from the cross of Jesus. And for Catholics, we celebrate a funeral mass for our deceased because we bring the body one last time into the dwelling place of God's people and place it before the altar that symbolizes that one sacrifice of Jesus, the Son of God, in which we have redemption and salvation. And that mercy and love of our Lord and Savior poured forth upon this earth by that moment, the saving mystery of Jesus' death and resurrection. That no matter how dark, no matter how confused, no matter how lost we may be in this world, the light of the risen one, who we heard today is the way, the truth, and the life, guides our path, symbolized by that large candle at the foot of the altar, and the presence of the casket. That in the time of death, the time of loss, we cast our hope, our trust, in the power of the cross of Jesus Christ. Saint Augustine is one of the greatest saints in the history of our church. And Saint Augustine was noted probably most famously for a phrase that our hearts are restless until they rest in God. And that phrase comes to play, I believe, very clearly. For we know as Jim lived this world, uh, that he certainly was a very faithful husband for 56 years. Uh, and that God blessed that marriage with, with three children and numerous grandchildren and great-grandchildren. What a blessing that we give thanks to God for today. Jim's life more than just family, certainly the business acquaintances and uh, the things that he truly enjoyed. That constantly searching, constantly growing, constantly deepening his love and affection for his family, for his business, and all those who journeyed with him in this life. But through it all, we always have a restlessness 
And some people find it in walking, some people find it in canoeing, kayaking, jumping off of bridges, uh, whatever uh, passion people have of interest to satisfy that curiosity and that restlessness. You know that the love and passion of his life, riding a motorcycle, Harley, and also being a proprietor of a dealership that helped others enjoy that activity. To see the glory and the nobility of that community that gathered to wake his loss yesterday, hundreds if not thousands of people responding in compassion for you and the loss of your father, your brother, your grandfather, your friend. Jim's death occurred right as the church entered into the season of Advent, a time of quiet, reflective time, anticipating, as we know, the Feast of Christmas that will be upon us in two short weeks. The biblical person that captures Advent is John the Baptist. John was the herald of Jesus' coming into this world, but John lived life with a little edge. He ate funny food. He wore a camel's clothing. He wanted to catch people's attention to say, look, people, God wants us to live here in a good way. He wants us so badly, he's going to send us a savior, Jesus, that's going to arrive shortly. And as we hear the word of God today, giving us the good news that comes to us from Jesus, that he has gone to the kingdom to prepare a place for us. You and I know that just as when we have a home, it is never finished. We're always improving upon it. When you have a motorcycle, it's a lifelong project of improving and making it our own, making it unique and special. When we have our life. We place it in the hands of God, and by his grace, he molds and fashions us as a beautiful person, as was Jim. Jim McMahon has been called home to God. And we face that reality, particularly you, his closest family and friends. And the purpose of our gathering here today is pray to our God, who we believe is so merciful and just, that he will admit him to that eternal dwelling place that Christ has prepared for him in the kingdom. We pray that the healing, saving love of Jesus will also be extended to his wife who struggles for health here on earth. And as you emotionally struggle with his loss, may God from heaven bestow his grace and healing upon your heart and soul that you will continue to place your trust and your faith in the goodness of God and the loving support that so many have shown you this past day that shows you this day. May God's grace be with you, for be assured of our love and prayer. Jim, may you rest in peace. With hearts and spirits burdened by the loss of Jim and the sorrow and grief that comes from such a loss, we place our hope in the Lord and offer these prayerful petitions. Please respond to the following petitions. Lord, hear our prayer. For Jim, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our brother, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. <clears throat> For the family and friends of our brother Jim, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen with, in love to the prayers of your faithful. Hear us as we offer them for our dearly departed Jim. Cleanse him of his sins and grant him the fullness of redemption through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. You please be seated.
Pray now, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Jim, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right and just. just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as one alone, he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying as one man he chose to die so that in your sight we all might live forever. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Would you kindly kneel or be seated? You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as O Lord, as we celebrate the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. 
grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. James, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Jim, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in resurrection. When from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To all of our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Can you please stand? My brothers and sisters, for we, a people of faith, we cherish the gift that our Lord and Savior left us, a gift of prayer to recite on our pilgrimage to his kingdom, for he is the way, the truth, and the life. From the depths of our hearts, we now offer that prayer for the repose of Jim, for the healing of Linda, and for the comfort and consolation of the family and friends who mourn Jim's loss. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us extend to each other a greeting of peace and comfort. And pleasure.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Thank you, Father, for a beautiful service. Thank you, music ladies and gentlemen, director. We appreciate everything. I had 1,500 pages, but I won't read them. This morning at sunrise, I stepped out in Jim's deck, Jim and Linda deck, and he told me, peace be with you guys. I'm in heaven. I'm playing golf. I haven't had my martini yet, but I will. And he sends his love to all of you. Linda, God bless you. We pray for your health. We pray that the operations will be so successful and that you'll be back home with your family once again. For the family who is going to visit her this weekend, please take our love to her. Give her a big hug from all of us. First time I met Jim was the summer of 1965. As many of you can tell, I don't have a Western Pennsylvania accent. I married a Hauser girl, as he did. Two wonderful women, just like their mom. But in the summer of 1965, I had a business trip to Los Angeles, so I was able to meet Linda and Jim for the first time, and also Aunt Pam and Uncle Don. We all had dinner together, and Linda, you know what happened at that dinner. The following Thanksgiving, Mona was with me, and we celebrated the birth of another young man, Tony. We stayed at Jim and Linda's house. I borrowed his car one night, on a foggy, foggy night, to see a friend in Long's Beach. I don't remember if you kids remember it, but it was a big old gray Cadillac. It was like a boat. And here I am struggling through the streets of Los Angeles and Long Beach with this monstrous car. But well, we made it. We saw him again in 1968 on his return here to Greensburg. His brother had called him and asked him to come back and the start of ZNM Motors. What a, what a wonderful, wonderful story. It is the American dream. And because of Jim and all his family, Linda by his side, you have built an incredible legacy here in Greensburg and the surrounding area. My last visit with them, because God told us to go down to Melbourne Beach for Thanksgiving this year, was maybe one of the best vacations we ever had. We celebrated Thanksgiving with Jim and Linda and her friends down there. We saw Jimmy and Lisa, I mean Lisa and Kim and Bruce, just as they were leaving. And uh, on the Saturday, we had breakfast. And I said to Jim, please take care of yourself. The only good thing, the best thing that happened, though, down there is I won at playing golf with him. Money, that is, not score. <laughs> That's the first time in my life that ever happened. Jimmy, I know when we get up there, you're going to take it back from me, too. He's a wonderful father. Grandfather, great-grandfather, husband, brother, to all his brothers and sisters here, our brother-in-law, I'll miss you dearly, but you're in God's hands. God bless you and keep you and keep the family. Thank you. Let us pray.
Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother Jim may come to the eternal table of Christ who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Jim, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Jim again and enjoy his companionship. Although this assembly will disperse in sorrow, we believe that the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. To you, O Lord, we commend the soul of Jim, your servant, for in the sight of this world he is now dead. In your sight may he live forever. Forgive whatever sins he committed through human weakness, and in your goodness grant him everlasting peace. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And in peace, let us now take our brother Jim to his final place of rest. <laughs> 